send us your feedback on setting up or getting set up. Yeah, if you've ever like tried to set up friends and it worked out or maybe like a situation went horribly wrong we just want to hear like how your setup has gone and that's always feedback at keeping it casual podcast.com and instagram slash keeping it casual pod until next cast. time <laughs> <laughs> one two three four hey i'm mj and i'm brie welcome to keeping it casual a sex positive dating and relationship podcast i'm a wife and a mom of two so you know i get it and i'm a career woman navigating the dating scene so i am here for you we love chatting about enhancing connection and long-term relationships and owning your independence by being your most authentic self so whatever stage of life you're in we want to empower you to take your life and sex life to the next level your vegas girls are here for you let's do it let's do it Hello! Greetings from a lovely afternoon here in Las Vegas. I hope you're uh, feeling fabulous over there in Iceland, wherever you are. Yes, <laughs> hello everybody. <laughs> Hi everybody! Okay, so big shout out to our sponsors, Like a Kitten. That's right. Who just launched their fall box. It's full of sensual products and one motorized toy. And today we are giving away their Build Your Own box to a special listener. To enter our monthly giveaways, give a rating and review on Apple Podcasts or join our Patreon. And this month's winner is a special Patreon subscriber, Miss Jan G. So uh, thank you for supporting us. You're going to be notified via Patreon. It's just easy. But yes. Uh, usually you guys just email us and then we hook you up with all the stuff. So exactly. Keep rating and reviewing. Bree is now a redhead, guys. Were you a redhead last time we recorded? Yeah, no, maybe. No, mm -mm. I don't think so. Mm -mm. And I love it on you. <laughs> no, because last time we recorded, we were laying in the back of your car. Oh, my God. We were recording <laughs> with, like, there was the helicopters. It was, like, a five-round helicopter. We're, and it's, like, it, we were in a heat wave, and we're trying so to hot. record a commercial. Yeah. So we had to go in the car, shut all the <laughs> windows. Bree's <laughs> <laughs> like, I, am do I feel like I'm doing hot Pilates. It's we true. We were sweating. But it's cool because, because we have the podcast equipment where we can just take everywhere on the go. Sometimes we're like, oh, we were out for a meeting meeting at a fabulous resort and yeah. like afterwards we'll just go like wherever and record and it was like so fucking noisy we we're like oh my everywhere God. was and we're like oh <laughs> it's just okay we've come to a point where we realize we have to be at keeping it casual hq to actually record a that's podcast. right the biggest disturbance would probably be violet or one of my children that's true and that they're, we can like, edit them out like when we were recording the sexy <laughs> stories and you just hear logan in the background going mommy <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh god! At least we can shut them up. We could not shut out the noise of the city. Though. Yeah, but she was like, she was like, I had my dick in my hand, and it was just like, <laughs> mommy. And like, she was like, fuck! I got my cock in my hand, and now I gotta go deal with the kid. I now I know guys feel blue balls. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yes, I actually just got back from Austin. I went to go see family who I haven't seen in a very long time. Okay, I'm so curious about Austin. It seems like just one of those super cool, groovy cities. On oh, the it map. is. How would you like describe the vibe there? Very San looks like the San Francisco of Texas. Oh, okay, all right. It's I very cool, that. very hip, very very urban. A lot of people walking around, I imagine. Yeah, a lot of walking around. A lot of really cool bars. I went to this one restaurant called Gordo's. Oh. That comes with like a donut with everything. So I had a salad with like a giant donut, <laughs> but it wasn't a sweet donut. It was just like they they put garlic butter on it. Oh, so it was a bagel. <laughs> well, no, it was fried like a donut. It wasn't a bagel. And then the a savory like, donut. I've never heard. Of yeah, that. it was a savory, not a sweet. But even and, and the one thing that they have on the menu that was really interesting was called the big cheese. So it was like a che like cheese sticks, like mozzarella sticks. But instead of like whatever crusty stuff they put on the outside of mozzarella sticks, oh. it was a donut. <laughs> That was their whole kitsch was like donuts everywhere. I love it. That's mm. I've never heard of a savory donut. It, it was it, they were actually pretty good. I didn't hate it. I was this many years old when I found out about that. <laughs> That's okay. I only found out about it a few weekends ago, but I guess it was on the Food Network or something. Okay. So yeah, so we did that and then um, most of my family lives like in a little suburb outside of Austin mm -hmm. called Georgetown. Okay. So I went to downtown Georgetown and I fell in love and it's so cute and it's yeah. just like a quaint little like breweries and little shops and whatever and i loved it yeah so it was cool i think you know honestly i think you would really enjoy the city i went to a watch party because uh, austin has their first professional team and it's a soccer team so it went um, bananas kind of like when 
Vegas finally got the Golden Knights. Well, what's crazy <laughs> is... Uh, he finally got a sports team. Yes. University of Texas Longhorn, what they do is they pay the city of Austin, because UT's there, to not bring in professional sports because they don't want That's any sick. competition with their college teams. Uh, our college, our UNLV, I mean, is pretty huge. We ain't going to leave you. We, we want more. We want it all. Yeah. Well, anyway, so I went to a, the, the watch party for the soccer games, and I like just fell in love because they have all these songs, and they're doing all this stuff. I was like, this is so fun. Yeah, it's the fall, y'all. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I, for 25 seconds, rode around on one of those little scooter things. Oh, my God. Chris and I did the birds. They're scary. They are scary. <laughs> I was intimidated. When we did downtown San Diego, yeah. we zipped around on those, and I was like, I don't know. I was like, ah! That's how I felt, too. I was like, ah! I can't balance. I don't trust not having one foot on the ground. Because, like, at least when you roller skate or skateboard yeah. or something, you yeah. still have some control. This yeah. is like, I have no control over anything. And people are everywhere. They're like, no big deal. And you get on, you're like, oh, my God. How are people not like just dead on the sidewalks here? Exactly. Just like, getting hit by cars constantly. There were, you see like the guy and the girl rolling around no. on it together. I'm like, hell no, I don't. So my um my brother and my sister in law who live out there, they found this restaurant. They were like, we were told that they have the best micheladas in town. Mm. And I was like, I'll be the judge of that. I, well, they, <laughs> that's why they brought me there. And I was like, y'all know me so well. <laughs> so we go there and they're like, it's gonna be an hour and a half. And we were like, well, we're downtown, so we'll just like you know we'll go around to another brewery or something and wait for, to get food. Oh, and what they had there that I really liked. Okay, so I don't like corn dogs. No, I don't either. Because I don't like hot dogs, but Same. I like the, the outer part of a corn dog. Oh, okay. They had like oh, hush puppies. They but they had corn shrimp dipped in corn dog batter. Cornbread. That's what it's called, right? Cornbread. I don't know. We're calling it corn dog <laughs> batter. They had shrimp dipped in it. I think it's cornbread. <laughs> they had shrimp dipped in it, and they had she like. She said Brie loves cornbread. <laughs> I do love cornbread though, but only sweet cornbread. Anyways, and then for the dipping sauce, it was like a hot mustard with a little bit of blueberry drizzle in it. Oh, okay. I was like, this is elevated in the way I like it. This is weird. Uh, Austin has a lot of strange food pairings, and I'm I'm pretty interested. I was here for it. <laughs> I was here for all of. It. I got no barbecue while I was down there, though. That doesn't, it sounds wrong. It sounds I know. Like you should have gotten all those things. I didn't get any barbecue, but I did get um, good tacos. Glad you had a fabulous Austin experience. I definitely want to go. And while you, while I was in I, Austin, you were at Revolution? Chris and I went to Revolution out here. It was just so great to go to a concert yes. again. And we did Mandalay Beach, the ultimate best place to see a concert mm-hmm. in Vegas. If you're ever looking at concerts in Vegas, like you want a good reason to come, like hit the summer concerts That's because you're halfway in the pool, the sand. Yeah. Yeah, that's and just wear flip flops, okay? Don't try to stunt in your heels, okay? It's seriously sand and water. You that's don't. so true because I think after we recorded last time, I went to Psycho Vegas, and yes. one of the stages is out on the beach stage. They do all the stages, so they have the beach stage, uh, the event center, and then yes. the House of Blues that they oh do all God. their bands at. So great. So, but what was so funny about it is they put on the beach stage like all the really, really, really death metal bands. Oh my God! So everybody's <laughs> out there in combat boots and it's like black socks. <laughs> Fucking mosh pitting. <laughs> like, there was a circle pit in the, in the pool. <laughs> in the pool. Yes. Oh, my God. That's I was so like, great. All right. <laughs> like, all the goth girls in the back, like, with white paint on their face. They're just like, don't splash me or you'll die. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm like, I, I mean, I wore my Vans because it was like a walk around concert or whatever. Yeah. And I was like, my friend was like, you need to wear your flip flops next time. I said, I'm not wearing flip flops to a concert or anywhere. Gross. Except for if it's just here. Yeah. That was just, just on the beach. Yeah. It was so magical and fun. I, st- I literally. Like walked up to the water to my knees and I stayed there all night. And yes. I was like, this is the vibe. The only vibe was is that there wasn't like a ton of weed smoking, which I was, you know, expecting oh. more of. But um, yes. it was all good. And it was just uh it was so magical. And we also went to Huntington Beach. Uh, yes. Took the fam. Brie House sat for me because now I have a giant dog that she, needs her own home to she, be. she does. She can't she can't go somewhere else. No, she has to be here. So Brie was house sitting. But Huntington Beach is like one of my favorite spots. Yeah. Yes. Like the beach vibe in California. The beach is huge, so there's so much space and, it's and clean. parking. It's clean. And they have fire pits all up and down the beach. Yes. So you could have little, like, roast s'mores and yes. stuff. And here's, I did learn, if you do go down there, you're like, oh, fire pit. Where do I get the firewood? Could have your own firewood and stuff. There's little, there's a little downtown area. They mm-hmm. they have it there. So you can, yes. like, just walk to the little, the little market place and they have it. Yes. So that was good to know. You like do a bonfire. There. I so miss it. Such a fabulous beach, but as far as lifestyle in Vegas, I mean, now we're doing this once a month, so a lot of new lifestyle and 
personal growth. What yeah. are you doing to stay happy and good, building good habits, you know, well, in life? Well, actually, my sister-in-law, we were both, like, talking about how we wanted to do some some diet changes, and we've been long-distance accountability buddies with each other. Hey, okay, I love it. And I still work out every day, and... So you just, well, how do you do that? You guys just, like, encourage each other, like, okay, girl. Oh, I'll text her. No, things. no, I will text her pictures of my food. Oh, nice. That's Every day idea. we text breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Okay. All right. Yep. It's really key, like, what you're eating and yeah. what time you're eating. I've I've been extremely fascinated with this book because I'm a very troubled sleeper, but sleeping is so important to, oh, like, yeah. everything in your life. And uh, I've been reading this book called, well, I've been listening to this book. It's in a book I heard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, change Your Schedule, Change Your Life. Mm-hmm. It's all about Ayurveda medicine. And oh. it's it's a whole thing but it's really brilliant and it wasn't what i was expecting like i'm like oh mm-hmm. but now i feel like i'm a doctor but um, oh it's it's fascinating i'm yeah. gonna have to turn you on to some stuff it's knowing your dosha and your body type and yes this is probably how you feel how i feel um when you start talking about astrology stars and the suns <laughs> and the moons but it's really you know what's funny is your dosha and all that stuff that all links all into astrology it's all one big belief i imagine it's honestly it's the oldest practice of medicine yeah like, going back like a million years it mm-hmm. was like the very first study of knowing your body yeah. so instead of going to a doctor and be like here's what's going on with me what are you going to do for me yeah it's basically like understanding why you feel these ways and yeah you react so i thought it was really cool so definitely highly recommend that book and um i've also was like i'm trying to get into my movement practice moving yeah early. so i found this little 10 minute morning yoga challenge yeah it's like a 30 day thing so i'm trying to do that and i was like i need to dance so I have been taking my heels dance class yes, for a month now. Yes, I've you noticed. Catch my clips on my gram at MJ Radio Diva. But <laughs> I, it's so fun just to like get in there and dance and take a silly dance yeah. class. It's like when do we? Sometimes we get so serious and like even when it comes to our workouts, yeah. they stop being fun and they just become like something we have to do and check off our list. Mm-hmm. It's like and eating healthy becomes something we have to do. Going to work, but it's like, are you doing anything just for fun? That's yeah. actually good for you. There's going out and partying and doing things like that. But doing if you're not doing anything that is just makes you so happy mm-hmm. and it's good for you and it's just fun, you should do that. Should I'm trying to read more. To do. And you oh, I did get I did get my mile down pretty quick. Ooh. So I started off when I started working out, my mile was 20 minutes because uh, I don't really run. I do have to wear two sports bras to go to the gym, <laughs> just just so everybody's aware of this. Big booby problems. Big titty problems. <laughs> um, so BTP, put it on shirt. <laughs> <laughs> um, Your merch coming soon. Yes. Um, yeah. So I I was like I was at 20 minutes because I don't really run very much, but I am down to 12 minutes on my mile. Okay. I do two miles a day, and then I go do whatever other workout I feel like doing, too. I love it. A lot of abs. Love it. I like abs. Abs are important. You got to get your planks on, get your crunches on. Yeah. Oh God. A little bit of weights. I, I was really focused on, like, weights, and if I'm not doing weights, I'm not working out, you know? But I had I had to remind myself that a daily yoga, even mm-hmm. if it's 10 minutes, is so beneficial. And if I want to kick it up a notch later on in the day, I'll get in... 15 minutes of Pilates or I'll do like yeah. a hit with weights, but I'm just not so focused on like, if I don't go hard, I'm not getting a workout because doing yoga and stretching every day is just as beneficial. So. Exactly. And and if you're we'll not stretch on. at least doing yoga once a week and you are going hard, then your body is going to be like, fuck you. Yeah, you got to recover. You yeah. Know? That's when you get like shin splints and stuff. That's when you, yeah. Or they call it like overuse injuries. Yes. You're like you pull something and you're like, oh, I'm always fucking pulling this, you know? Well, that's why like chance. a lot of trainers will say like, you can't just do total body every day. You've got to work on your arms one day, yes. your legs one day, your yep. boot, you know, like you got to break up the workouts. Yeah. I really think like um, just reading this book and like being this headspace of like understanding my body and stuff has mm-hmm. really slowed me down, made me appreciate like, okay, that you don't need instant results, you know, just take your time to get where yeah. you're going and, you know, just little things to make you happy. Have you watched anything good? Anything? I'm watching it actually like just premiered yesterday. I'm watching that documentary called Lula Rich about the multi-level marketing legging company. <laughs> Lula Row? <laughs> yes. No, is it good? What's it on? Dude, it's on Amazon Prime. It's scandalous. It's scandalous. I love scandals. You are going to love it. Honestly, really? it's like a four episode docu-series. I'm on episode two right now and I was just like, I'm watching it going, oh, they did that. They're like, the owners were like encouraging the girls to get weight loss surgery if they were a little overweight. Like, well, don't you want to look good in our clothes if you're going to be selling our clothes and just oh stuff God. like that. 
And one girl was like, I felt like I joined a cult. And uh, I was like, you did, honey. <laughs> damn. Like, Come on, blast. Yeah, they were Garbage. saying that, like, the girls that were talking about it were saying that, like, they would go to the big LuLaRoe conventions and the owners would start um, saying scriptures from the Book of Mormon because they're both LDS. Oh and they were like, and the, like a lot Keep of the girls. religion out of business. Exactly. Yes, that's it. That's all I'm going to say about that. Mm-hmm. Want to be spiritual, it's, that's one thing, but keep your religion out of everything. It's quite scandalous, and I love it, and I can't <laughs> wait to finish it. <laughs> I'm watching uh, me and Chris, actually. We've just never been able to link up on a show, and Mm-mm. actually, like, I could wait for him to come back around and watch it with me again. Mm-hmm. But we watched that clickbait. Oh, on, yeah. It was fucking good on Netflix. Did you see it? No, but I hear it's very always in, like, good the things about tens. it. Yeah. It is, and it's only, like, eight episodes, so yeah. it's doable, and you don't have to suck your life into it, but that was really hot, so I love that one. I'm and excited for the next season of You. It's gonna is be it the, coming on. It's gonna be the final season. Ooh, I like that one. You there's gonna good. be a baby. Mm, was there? I don't know. I saw pictures of it. Oh. Looks like there's a baby coming. Oh my god! It's gonna be like a fucking Dexter situation with a baby. Probably. Yeah, you that's know, a twisted ass show. My sister-in-law. She was telling me she was like, the books are really good for you. Oh. Because it's t- yeah, they're they're all ba- the show is based off of a bunch there's of a books. Book, there's a good book for everything. God. Yeah, the show's based off of the books, and she said that like it's the books are all from his point of view. Ooh. So it's like well, the show kind of is well, right? it, but it's in his head. It's like yeah. I'm watching you. I'm do you know what I yeah. mean? Like I was like. Woo! That is such a great show if you haven't seen it. You know what I'm starting to watch too is uh, I'm watching the Wu Tang, the Wu Tang like. You're the second person today who has talked to me about the Wu Tang documentary. Okay, here's I'm gonna fully, uh, yeah, I'm gonna fully admit that like I, <laughs> I grew up listening to Wu Tang. Like I, hell could, yeah, I could go to karaoke and sing Wu Tang, but it would be so like inappropriate because there's a lot of words just, that I should be that a, out of my mouth that a white girl can't sing. <laughs> But I know all the words, and I spit them with some swag. But um, I didn't know, like, the RZA was the mastermind behind everything. I didn't either. You would have... He's the fucking like he's the DJ. He's the mm-hmm. music man. I'm like I'm like everybody's like oh it's probably Method Man. He's you would man. think it was Red Man yeah. or Method Man, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but you would think like and Raekwon, boy, what a thug, man. He was like the outcast. I don't know, but it's just really interesting. Like so, while I'm watching the first episode, I'm like, because they don't go by there. They're like, yeah. oh, Bobby, who's the RZA? You mm-hmm. know, they're like this guy or this guy. So I'm trying to like guess. I'm like, who's this guy? And they have this really mm-hmm. sexy guy with a big afro, and they got him in there. He's like, I came to bring the pain. I'm like, oh, it's Method Man. <laughs> so it's been fun to watch. But uh, yeah, that's so. awesome. That's all I'm watching. But uh, hell yeah, I had a crazy situation. Uh, okay, I get okay. into a little something real quick that I wanted your opinion on. Okay? All right, here's what happened. Bring it on me. What's a girl to do when she runs out of her favorite like a kitten products? How about a box full of all her most wanted sensual picks with their latest BYOB? Build your own box. Now you can choose the products that fit your sexual desires. Six categories with over 60 items to choose from. A $200 value all for just $69. Your pick of a toy, beauty product, lube, sexual activity, accessory, and lingerie. This box is a steal. Head to likeakitten.com and use code KEEPERS20 at checkout for an additional 20% off. Every woman is unique and your sex toys should be too. Mix and match your BYOB box today at likeakitten.com code KEEPERS20. Here's what happens. Bring it on me. You got amazing friends, right? Yeah. And you want to set them up. All of a sudden you're like, holy shit, this guy, single dad, he's Mm -hmm. cool as hell, fucking hates the apps. Works crazy hours, works hard, has got a house. He's, yeah. he's just got it going on, and he's cool. Um, this chick, she's a badass. She's beautiful. She runs her own business. She's not on the apps, you know? She's mm-hmm. just, the, you know, you're just like, these are people that around the same age that probably should connect. You yeah. know what I mean? You're like, but how do I link them up without making them uncomfortable? So here's what I did. Here's a situation that went down, right? Me and all of our friends are going out, and um, they invited their one buddy. But we all kind of schemed on it. I was like, yo, I was like, you need to invite him because I'm going to invite her. But I told her about him. Ah. This might be where I went wrong. Yes. <laughs> but also something else went wrong. So I was like, listen, I got this guy. He's very cool. You know, he's a mm-hmm. single dad. He's working. And yeah. Everything. You know, I just gave her the rundown. And I was like, here's this picture, you know, kind of. So I was like, I said, hey, why don't, we're all going out somewhere. Why don't you come mm-hmm. and be like a casual introduction and see what's going on? Mm-hmm. She's like, OK, yeah, that'd be fun, you know. Mm-hmm. <sighs> so as soon as we get to the place. He's the, with a girl. No. Oh, uh, no. But. Our friend, the other couple that was going to bring him, got really drunk, and she was like, I'm so excited for you to meet our friend. And you kind of blew it. 
a little bit to where like now he knows we've got someone there yeah. we might want to set up with. So that was something that went wrong. So he already shows up looking good, feeling good, excited. When we got to the place we were going, this bar, this gorgeous, beautiful 22-year-old is like, hi, our hot little waitress. I'm talking boobs, lips. She's got the works, and she's just a fucking babe. And immediately, he's just like, uh, drooling. Again, he's uh, in his early 40s, so yeah. step off, buddy. So, of course, he's just like gaga ga- ga and very distracted by this girl uh-huh. tonight. And the second, like, she's standing there and he's talking to her, here comes my friend, who's appropriate age for her and beautiful and gorgeous, but yeah. he's already distracted by this 20-something. And she's like, hi. And he's just like, "Uh uh-uh. Just was so cold and like just uh, not even acknowledging her, not even talking to her. Just like. Oh, my God. Even acting weird and standoffish to where like if he didn't know it was a setup, he'd just think, hey, this is my friend. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and he'd probably be like, oh, yay, ha ha, giggling and laughing. But because he thought it was a setup, he was like, I'm not even going to give her the chance of day. But Ooh. that's okay because he got his own taste of his medicine because he asked the he asked the girl how old she was. And she's like, oh, I'm 22, the waitress, the cute waitress. And he goes, oh, I'm I'm like 43. He goes, oh, I got a daughter your age. And she goes, I don't think my mom would like this very. I don't think my mom would like it very much and kind of bopped off. So I was like, that's what you get, fool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> some 20 year olds. But. Anyways, it just you could tell my friend was a little butt hurt about how how just cold Things shoulder went, he got. Yeah. It just didn't turn out good. And it's okay. just a shame because I don't think if my friends told him about her, yeah. but also there was a big cock block. Yeah. Because he's out of his he's out of his league trying to chase girls out of his league and says somebody that's good for him. Anyways, thoughts okay. on what the fuck do you how do you make these things happen? You don't tell anybody. Yeah. Maybe maybe just tell your husband. Maybe just get Chris in on it. Don't tell anybody. Right. Don't tell either of them. Just get them in the same place. Yeah. Don't go to a place where there's hot, big boobed waitresses. Oh, my God. I'm having a barbecue at the house. Yeah. Come over. Come over. Yeah. And invite them. Yeah. Nobody needs to know. Not even one person. Or go to to PTs. But not even one person needs to know. Exactly. Nobody needs to know. Neither of them can know. No. Because it, it could have been, because we had another it makes, buddy there. Because it makes it awkward. Yeah, and we had another buddy there who wasn't, you know, he was just being friendly with everybody. You know? Who, Uncle Charlie? Uh, no, it was another friend. <laughs> but he had his girlfriend, but uh-huh. she wasn't there. Mm. But he was comfortable and casual. Yeah. And, and talking to her, at least. This guy wouldn't even talk to her, because he was so like, oh, they're trying to set me up, and I don't want to lead her on like I'm interested. It was just, it f- I felt shitty, and I felt so bad. Aww. And I was like, God, what a babe she is, and this guy's yeah. being all sucky. Yeah, it's well, that, that's on him, it too. Yeah. Maybe it wasn't his type, and I get it, but still, he could have been cool. Yeah, that's also on him, too, though. I want to know what friends off mic. Uh, yeah, well, I did see him at another event around a pretty girl mm-hmm. that was, like, one of our friends, and... And he made no moves. And I was like, dude, is this how you are around pretty girls? Like, do you not know how to step up? Like, well, he sounds like on? he's got a whole other load of issues that don't yeah. need to get. <laughs> yeah. So what would you do if you had two friends that wanted to get set up together? Like, how would you play that out? What if one of them knew and <sighs> it just doesn't work good? It doesn't. Like, if I knew you would be good for somebody, you would want me just to casually invite you somewhere that they yeah. can be. Yeah. I would let just. Let anybody know what's up? Not any. Not Yeah. Don't let any. Maybe tell Chris. Like, if you were like, oh my God, Brie would be so good with blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Not Uncle Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> put that evil on you. Good Lord. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Uncle Charlie has become a character of the show and nobody understands oh it. Oh my God. He's <laughs> so fun and yes. he has this evil, wicked, wild laugh, but yes. he's just kind of an insane alcoholic. Like when you get together drinking people, some people are just like insane. Yes. And that's him. Oh, but Uncle Charlie. He's too old for any of my friends. Yes, he is. I'm like, no. But Anyways. he goes for it. But if you're like, if you're like, man, Brie would be like, would really enjoy this guy. That'd be so so cool you'd just be like hey we're all coming you would have to make it a point because you can't call me day of because you know me i have yeah. to like if it's not in my schedule i probably uh-huh. won't show up mm-hmm. you'd be like hey next week we're throwing a barbecue you should come over and i'll be like oh yeah. no just be like no you have to come it's for vivian's graduate you know yeah. make it something yeah okay and then invite the other person hey you have to come to this blah 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 yeah. and then just hey have you met my friend uh, have you met ted uh, huh. You watch how I met your mother, so you know. Have you met Ted? Okay, okay. Yeah, I kind of fell off that. Yeah, it wasn't. It was like my like, yeah easy doing laundry show. Yeah, to watch for a while. So yeah, so you just kind of like 
introduce them and then let things happen. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. You're like, right. cause if you, if you go into something expecting to be like, Oh my God, this is a setup. You get really nervous. I'd imagine. Yeah. And then yeah. when one person shows you any kind of resistance, you start to doubt yourself. And exactly. And I feel like I just put her in a position to just go home and feel like, what well, was I not pretty enough? Yeah. Just, I'm too old. And it's not I'm that you the, did. It's yeah. just, it gives you all those feelings. It does. It does. So what you what, just basically don't let it be a known thing. Let it be a casual. Keep it casual. Keeping it casual. I mean, duh, of course. So we want to ask you if you've ever, like, tried to set up friends and it worked out or maybe, like, a situation went horribly wrong. We just want to hear, like, how your setup has gone because it's happened and it happens. But problem is you're sitting with your girlfriend. You're like, oh, my God. You want to gossip about this cool guy yeah. that's good for them. And then you knew that already you've gone too far. So resist the urge. And just let it happen naturally. There, there. I love All that. righty. And I think that's it, guys. That's it, guys. Send, us your, send us your feedback on setting up or getting set up. Yeah, we'd love to hear that. And that's always feedback at keepingitcasualpodcast.com and Instagram slash keepingitcasualpod. Until next Cast. time. Say <laughs> <laughs> until next time. Until next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for listening. We just love catching up with you. New episodes drop the last Wednesday of every month. Get in on the Keeping It Casual Super Sexy monthly giveaways by dropping a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. And if you're a true keeper, join the Patreon for our specialty podcast starting at just $5. Details on everything at keepingitcasualpodcast.com.